We can make colors pop in portrait photos using Photoshop's hue saturation adjustment layers. We're going to use adjustment layers so we can edit it after the fact. And this effect is pretty cool in that it can really make the colors pop in our portraits and also selecting certain color ranges and making them more noticeable and pop out more. So go ahead and open up princess.jpg if you want to follow along with this support file. And on the bottom of the layers panel, if you go ahead and click add a new adjustment layer icon and go to hue saturation. Notice we have saturation here and where it says master. By default, it's going to affect every single color. So we can bring it all the way to the left and it'd be grayscale. All the way to the right, it'd be overblown and we wouldn't want to do that much saturation. But for this technique, we actually want to just make the red pop out more in our hair. So up where it says master, go ahead and click that and go to reds. And then if you click and drag to the right, it'll start to make that hair pop out more. You notice that also the rosy cheeks there are also becoming a little bit more saturated. We can adjust the lightness if you want, but by default, it chooses this range down at the bottom of these sliders. So look down there and a lot of people are not aware of these, but we can adjust this range and what is affecting. So let's say we wanted to select more reds or fewer reds. What we could do is just temporarily bring hue all the way to the right. So it just does this effect that's noticeable. So we'll know what we're affecting, what we're not. Then you see these four sliders down here. The ones on the outside, you can drag and it's not going to affect the base area that is being sampled for this example the reds it's just going to affect kind of the feathering of the adjustment and you'll notice the colors down here are affected but the middle range here is not being affected the, the main area same thing for the right hand side so it's not affecting this primary area that's being affected it is just affecting how it does like if i bring it over to the right more see it does start to affect some of the pixels but if you click and drag that middle area, now we're actually moving the entire area. And if I let go, now it's actually changed it up here where it says yellows. And if I drag it here, you can see yellows. It's actually changed it to yellows up there. If I click and drag over here, eventually it becomes greens because this middle area is actually under the greens. So if we go over here, change to blues. So we want to keep it under reds, but I want to just bring it out a little bit so we're selecting more of the reds and you'll see what's being affected here so we use this technique to select more of a color range than what was originally included in there all right I think that's good now let's bring hue back to zero because we don't want that effect and then saturation we can bring to the left or the right just depending on what look we're going for and there we go. There's the colors popping out a lot more. Now, the cool thing about this is if we close this out and we're like, you know, maybe it's a little bit overdone, you can double click on it in the layers panel and still adjust it. Just go to reds and then adjust it there. So it's a live effect. You can also adjust the opacity of this entire adjustment layer. So if you think it was too strong, you can bring it down a bit. And we can mask out certain areas say if you didn't want this area back here affected you can see the before and after it is affecting in the background there and you would just paint with a soft edge brush some black here and then there's the before and then there's the after so the colors are popping out a lot more i'll show you one more example this one's depth of field 2.jpg from another technique that we're in this course so a couple more things to consider. Let's go ahead and add a new hue of saturation adjustment layer. Now, let's say in this one we want the green to pop out more. Well, we would go to master and then green, and then we'd pop it out more. But of course, maybe it's not selecting everything we want. Maybe we want some of the darker greens as well. Just a wider range of greens. We can just click and drag it there. And then you can see what's being affected. I need to select even more, I think. Let's bring that way over. There we go. See, now really we have all the grass. We don't want 
her skin tone, uh, really any on her selected or affected, but we do want all the grass affected here. So now that we have that, let's bring back the hue to zero. That's just to see what's being affected. And then bring the saturation up. Don't want to do it too much. So there's before and there's after. Before, after. One more thing to check out. Let me create another one. I'm going to show you a cool thing. Right here, if you click that hand, uh, if you hover over it, it should say click and drag in the image to modify saturation. Control click to modify hue. So if I click that and I just click somewhere in the image here, it wherever I clicked, it clicked in a yellow area of the grass. And now if I click and drag left and right while I'm on the image, it's affecting the saturation. It's kind of a scrubby zoom. If you click and drag, it will change the saturation by default. If you hold control on the PC or command on the Mac, it will actually change the hue by default. So that's a couple shortcuts to be familiar with uh, in this hue saturation technique. Again, hue saturation, we want to choose a color range over here. Let's say we didn't want to just choose some kind of color range preset here. We just want to actually select it in here. Well, again, we can click that and let's just select the red here. It chooses the reds by default. We can still adjust it here and I can click and drag and it will adjust the red. So it makes the reds pop out more. It begins to affect her though. We wouldn't want that if we were just wanting the red of this frisbee to pop out. What we could do, well, cool thing is, is these hue saturation adjustment layers come with a mask. So we can use the brush tool again, soft edge brush, black as a foreground color, and just paint. Because you don't want any area, let's say, affected other than that frisbee. All right, we had some on the roof as well. So there's before, there's after. So there we go. Uh, that is the hue saturation adjustment layer. It can be used to make colors pop in your portrait photos.